What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Who Runs and in this episode I talk to Matt Teague from the company Runner. Runner is still a relatively small company but it's driven by its passion for running, its passion for bringing runners together. They make casual and technical clothing for runners and using recycled or organic materials where possible. I'm a big fan of the brand so I wanted to get to know the faces behind the brand and more importantly I wanted to get to know about Matt's experiences as a runner. I met Matt late at night at a cafe in London, so here's what he had to say. Um, so, I think I started when I used to play a lot of football, as, as, uh, as, as you do growing up and, and in my 20s. And then I think I got injured, uh, a little hip injury, which meant I um, couldn't really sort of twisting, wasn't, it wasn't very good. So I had to sort of quit football, my blistering football career came to an end. And, I say career, it was a, <laughs> wasn't much of a sad moment to be fair. Um, I thought, well I need to continue, I want to do a bit of exercise, you know, and I quite like sort of pushing myself and challenging myself. So I got into sort of short, sort of five, ten K sort of distance running, um, just with some friends really, you know, just a bit of, bit of competitiveness, a bit of um, a bit of fun running against each other, racing against each other, um, and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where I started really. I never really, um, never really, never big into sort of long running in fairness, like, other than the football field when I was sort of growing up. Um, but yeah, late 20s, early 30s, sort of, yeah, I thought, well, I need to pick up something else because I can't play football as much anymore. Um, so yeah, so I got into running and then yeah, never looked back, really. Yeah, I, I think I've done, oh, I've, got, I've got, some, got some good memories of running, um, some good, some bad. Uh, I think my, possibly some of my favourite ones, I think I did end the South Downs Way 50 mile. I think that was, that was memorable because it, like most of my runs don't generally go to plan, um, but that one actually kind of went to plan. So I had, I, I trained well, you know, I was in good shape. I felt physically in good shape, mentally. I felt felt like I, you know, I could achieve this. I've never run more than 50k before, so, um, so it's, it's quite a step up. But um, it sort of felt like a natural step up, and uh, it's one of those runs that um, it's a beautiful day on the South Downs Way, which is a, is a beautiful part of, uh, of, of, of Britain. Um, yeah, so it went for yeah, a beautiful run. Uh, and I just kept running and running, and I had a few, you had a few low moments, you had a few high moments, and uh, but all, all in all, it just everything sort of came together, and um, yeah, I had a fantastic time out there. And you kind of once you're in the countryside and you sort of get moving, um, you know, you can't really beat it to me. So um, like that always that always sticks out as probably one of my my favourite runs. Um, but last year, I think probably one of the best things I've done was a 24 hour race. Um, and that was, that was, as, as, as a team, I have to say. So, um, so we were, I had a team, team runner, and we were running and retailing for 24 hours, which logistically in itself is an <laughs> absolute disaster. But, um, shift work. Well, well, that was fundamentally what it is for 24 hours. And when you're not doing shift work, you're either sleeping, eating, or running. Um, but the reason that was, it was just, it was just amazing. So there was, it was seven of us in the team, um, friends, and my, my wife was there as well, so friends and, and, and my wife. Um, but just to share that with, with everyone else, I think was really special. Because I do a lot of running, you know, I do a lot of training miles, I do a lot of long distance running, I do a lot of short distance running. And I do run with some friends, you know, and it's great to run with friends, but you know, I think friends sort of come and go in the running scene, because they kind of, you know, they, they drop out, and they kind of done the, reach the marathon goal, you know, want to take a few months off or whatever, and I've sort of always carried on. Um, so it's just something I really love doing. Um, but to be able to share that, you know, that 24 hours, you know, everyone, it was, it was good because everyone, we had a little rotor and everyone said how many miles they wanted to do. Basically, it was, it was like 5.2 mile laps. So um, how, how many sort of laps did you want to do over the 24 hours? We had a nice little rotor. But I think everyone was nervous going into it uh, and like, kind of like, will I be able to achieve it? Well, what's the sleep deprivation going to be like? And you know, what's the eating like? And that kind of stuff. By the end of it, I, I actually gave up one of my laps at the end because like, someone else wanted to do one. And I was like, they, everyone was really buzzing for it. And they really genuinely wanted, they were all gutted that they couldn't do another lap. I was like, this is, this is amazing. because I wasn't really expecting that. I thought everyone by the end of it would be like, you know, fed up, you know, it's, it's difficult, you know, that, but everyone was generally on a high, and I remember, you know, I think that, for me, that was really special, being able to share that um, with friends and with, with, with my wife as well, and just, um, yeah, but, and everyone just absolutely loved it the entire day, so, so yeah, they're my two best running memories. One classic one, and I think I wrote a blog about it, um, but I did, um, did the Edinburgh Marathon uh, back in 2013, I think, um, well, it's it, it's fast and flat. And I think I think they might have changed it. I'm not sure, but they, you start the first the first 10k is basically you start high and you sort of weave your way down to the, the sea, and um, so it's a fast start. And I, I've been training with a friend and running about eight 45 minute mile pace. So that's you know I would have got around safely with that sort of pace, you know, and I probably would have enjoyed myself. Um, me being me, I thought, thought I was a bit uh, I thought I was Mo Farah. I went out. I started running about seven 40 minute mile pace. Uh, I don't. Know, I just. I said to my friend, like, like the gun went off. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Like, we were gonna run together. Like, no, I'll just. I'll carry on. I'll, we'll see you at the end. You know. I'll just. 
feeling okay, so I'm just going to go go for it. So, um, so yeah, so I started about 740 minute mile pace, and uh, I felt great. I felt first 10k because it was downhill, got to the seafront, it was nice and flat. Then uh, felt great on the flat. I got to mile like 10, thinking sub 80 mile 10. I'm probably going a little bit too fast here, but I feel good. Yeah, you know, I know I can do it. Cause I, 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 a half marathon PB was yeah, was was well within that. Um, I just hadn't trained for the marathon distance, um, and then. Uh, yeah, got to mile 17 and I was looking around thinking there's a lot of people in sort of short shorts and club vests here and I feel I was wearing my like, you know, completely out of my depth, you know, I don't, don't ride somewhere, just shorts and a t-shirt, you know, off we go kind of thing. So I was thinking, hmm, a bit out of my depth for this sort of place. Still, still about 7.40 um, and to cut a long story short, got to mile 22.54, I think, on my, 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 on my, <laughs> on my end of wonder it stopped. And basically, apparently, I don't, I don't remember this, apparently I was sort of staggering across the course um, uh, thankfully, from one of the St. John Ambulance people sort of sat me down on a curb and, uh, uh, and you know, I sort of uh, vomited for want of a better expression and, and they sort of sat me down in a tent for two hours basically, having Gatorade and, and salt and vinegar crisps. So I, I do remember that. I, um, I remember at the end of it, actually during it, he said, you know, they took my bib off me. So it's not, a, so I can't claim it as one of my marathons because they took my bib off me because <laughs> I had my emergency contact details in. Um, and me being me, they rang my emergency contact number. My phone started ringing on my arm, so I'd obviously put <laughs> I'd obviously put my number down as my emergency contact number. I'm not entirely sure how that happened, so completely useless. And uh, yeah, so I said at the end of it, you know, can I can you can I get a lift to the to the end at sort of 22 and a half miles to the end? They said no, you've got to, you've got to get yourself there basically. So I was like, oh great, okay. Um, but I felt a bit better, so I ended up just sort of plodding on, plodding on, and the crowd was sort of cheering you on, feeling sorry for myself, and uh, got over the line. I think it was something like five hours, twenty-nine minutes. So not the worst, not the worst That's time, right. not the worst time. Was, nap, no, it, it, exactly, yeah. But unfortunately, I didn't have my bib because they didn't give it back to me. Obviously, I wasn't, uh, wasn't thinking quite straight, so I didn't get it back. Unfortunately, so, um, so I can't officially count it. But you know, that was one of my uh, memorable moment in my running career, but not for a positive <laughs> sense. But um, yeah, it was, it was good fun anyway. Lessons learned. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I thought like to be open about these things because you know, it's you know, there's everybody. You know, you share you share pictures. You know, runs, good runs, all that kind of stuff. And everyone sort of thinks everyone else. It always looks quite easy for everyone else's runs. You know, the beautiful surroundings. You know, the, the mile is cocked up. They've got some great digit. You know, like stats and stuff. I think. You know, but actually, it's not really the case. Sort of. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. Running is hard. You know, if you don't if you don't sort of put the effort in, you know, and, and sort of focus it and, and put the training in, then it's hard, you know, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna struggle. So, um, yeah, I, I think for me, you know, what I think I, it was sort of, a, sort of put me back in check a little bit, because I think, you know, I shouldn't have gone off at that pace, you know, you really shouldn't go off at that pace if you've not been training at that pace for that distance. So kind of need to sort of you know, respect the distance a bit more and think actually, if I want to try and achieve a, a, a you know, 7.40 minute ma mile marathon, then, you know, that, that's fine, but, you know, you need to, you need to sort of, need to train for it, you know, to the appropriate training. And in fairness, I think I got a hydration wrong. You know, I'm going to use that as an excuse. It wasn't Scotland, so it wasn't that hot, but you know, I got, I just got my hydration wrong. I didn't, uh, when I got to the end, I remember when I got back to the hotel, I sort of opened up my mat pack, uh, my, um, uh, a backpack thing and uh, a hydration vest. And it, 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 was, it, was, it was far too full for mile 22 and a half. So for me, I, I was, um, I thought, you know, that I'm a bit, bit, bit dubious of those from now on because I like to see how much I've drunk. And then it literally, it's because of that one moment, I think, you know, um, you know, not drinking enough. So I think if, if I do use, use sort of vests and stuff, I need to make sure that I'm constantly drinking. And um, so that was a big lesson. Uh, lesson on pacing, uh, lesson on hydration. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think, as I said, I got into running. To, it was to keep fit, you know, because I couldn't play football anymore. But the reasons to, for getting in, I quite like the competitive side. And it was only competitive against friends and myself, and you know, I wasn't nowhere near the front of the, the, the field, but quite like the competitive side of it. And um, I didn't realise, actually, it was good physically, but it was also very good mentally. And I think what, what's, what I've completely changed, and I didn't, I, I didn't I know insight into it beforehand, is the mental side. You know, I think it's really good. Uh, and that's kind of the reason why I, I sort of run now, sort of, sort of keep myself sort of, uh, mental sort of health in check, you know, and it's good for me just and that kind of stuff. I really, I really find um, running uh, is a really sort of very therapeutic uh, thing for myself to do. So like, that wasn't a consideration when I first started, but um, but now I think yeah, that it is definitely just just sort of zoning out, going for a nice little run, um, you know, having my own time, my own thoughts uh, was something that I wouldn't have considered back then. It was just a, just kind of wanted to go out and race some friends and stuff and see what times I could clock up. But um, yeah, completely changed, I'd say. So it's a really good question. Yeah. I think 
I genuinely think if you break it, break running down, and, and, I, and I, I do compare running to life. I think you know, like life and work can be quite difficult sometimes. You know, and you feel a bit daunted, a bit overwhelmed by the task at hand. But I think if you break it down into manageable chunks and you kind of wrap a plan around it um, and, and then commit to that plan, which is fundamentally that's what training for you know, 5k, 10k marathons and ultra marathons is, is putting a plan in place, right, and committing to it. I do think you can achieve a lot more than you realise. So I had a lofty goal of running a 7.40 minute marathon pace at Edinburgh collapsed, but that's because I hadn't really prepared for it. But, but I think if, 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 you, if you prepare correctly for it and you, and you manage that, you know, have a plan and focus and commit to it, I do think, you know, I think anyone could certainly in the ultra marathon space, you know, you, you, could, you could achieve a lot more than you realise. Um, so, so kind of, yeah, I think people can get a bit sort of, you know, in the head. Um, I remember I ran uh, Red Born to Run, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you've read it. Um, I think I was laying on a sun lounger in somewhere in the sun, somewhere having a beer, reading, reading that, and I genuinely got off the sun lounge and thought, you know what, I could run like the Taramara for like days on end, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to sign up for an ultra marathon. And yeah, you know, and never have run for days and then, but you know, you do sort of daydream a little bit. But I do think, you know, if you have a have a plan and you sort of stick to it, I think I think a lot more is in you than, than, than people realise. I think so. Um. Touch wood, and we touch wood here because not really no. It's had a bit of problems with the hip flexors, you know, and and and, and, and a bit of, bit of issues there. I think it's the ITB band, isn't it? Um, so I'm not, uh, not uh, but I've had a bit of physio on that in the past, but um, it was like some really sharp pain, you know, on, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your hip side. Um, but it, it kept me out for a little bit, but not really. So like, I know there's lots of uh, people, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keep, keep my fingers crossed because I'm going to be cursed for myself to say it. But thankfully, I've, um, other than obviously my collapse in Edinburgh, which I sort of took it a bit easy for, for quite some time, shall we say, but um, no, I've never, never been injured. Um, I know, I think, and it's probably because the last sort of number of years, I've never really like, raced and pushed myself in, in the races. I kind of run for enjoyment, and, and I think you know you're not, you know, you're sort of a bit more relaxed. Your body's a bit more relaxed. You take a bit more time over these things, um, and don't put as much pressure on yourself. And I don't know, maybe maybe that's just in the head, but I, I do think that because I haven't put pressure on myself uh, and just run for enjoyment, I don't think I've sort of managed to pick up any injuries as, you know, like other people. But. To be honest, so I used to run with music um, when I was doing sort of the shorter stuff. I used to run with music. I guess maybe the reason you know, it helps keep the tempo up, you know, and if you're trying to run a bit fast, keep the tempo up. And then, and then for years now, I, I, just, I, I just just run, just yeah, run with my own, consumed in my own thoughts. And uh, I, I, I think sometimes you just, it's quite nice just to hear your own breathing and sort of you know the rhythm of your sort of your, your, your legs and your strides and stuff. And, um, and just sort of look around because you know, I think I've done a lot of sort of uh, trail running on the South Downs way and that kind of stuff. And um, certainly the ultra marathons I've done have always been on sort of trails and off road. And, and just just enjoy the countryside. And um, I did race the King last year, and and obviously I intended to run by myself uh, without any music the entire time. I met met two guys uh, who had only just met each other a mile. Met them at mile one and a half of a 53 mile ultra marathon. Um, they were talking about Canada, and I'd just been to Canada a couple of oh, the, the, the August before. So I just sort of, sort of busted into the conversation at mile one and a half, and we just we, we basically ran together, all three of us, till mile twenty. And one of the guys picked up from an injury and had to, he had to sort of sit out for a little bit. But me and the other guy, we just kept running together the whole the whole way. So we ran you know, fifty, you know, one and a half miles uh, with each other, and um, yeah, just had a, got, got on really well, and just started chatting. And you sort of. In races, you kind of meet other people as well. I say races, I call them runs, really. You meet other people along the way, because certainly in the longer stuff, you're sort of going a bit slower and everyone's more welcoming for conversation. You just just generally chit chat. And I just like talking about running, as you're probably yeah. are, already <laughs> aware of that. So um, yeah, so sometimes consume myself with other people. Um, if I'm on my own running, just, just out running, then yeah, just just trying to break down problems in your head. Because, you know, you know, I think, um, Life's quite hectic, you know. Everyone's life's quite hectic, um, and it's generally get a lot of you time sometimes. So it's nice to be able to just literally, you know, just 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 by yourself, just thinking through problems um, and trying to understand, you know, like just breaking breaking problems down and just yeah, just thinking things through really. And um, yeah, it's not. I, I, I'm quite good at like zoning out. I think it must be a skill. I sort of just just completely zone out. Maybe I do it at work too much as well. But uh, um, but yeah, you sort of zone out and just yeah, just sort of feel the rhythm of the sort of the breathing and stuff. And it's quite therapeutic, I find. So yeah. So I sat on a train between Paddington and Manchester in, I think it was about October 2015, uh, going to a, uh, a meeting, um, and I just sort of 
I was just sat there thinking, there's lots of people on this train, and obviously, I've, as you can probably tell, I'm quite passionate about running and I quite like talking about running. And um, yeah, I was sat on the train thinking, oh, there must be lots of other people on this train, you know, that I could have a conversation about running with that would help sort of, you know, pass the time between Paddington and Manchester. Um, but obviously, you know, you wouldn't necessarily just go up to random people on, on a train carriage saying, do you like running, do you like running, do you like running, until you eventually find someone. Um, so I thought, I thought there, I thought, you know what, if there was a way of us sort of identifying, um, you know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a runner, really, you know, in, in sort of everyday life, and, you know, and, and in a sort of a lifestyle sort of choice type thing, I think it would be great, you know, and, and all runners are generally pretty, pretty friendly, we well, friendly bunch, right? You know, we kind of like, kind of proud of what we've done and what we're doing, and we're kind of like talking about it to other people and quite like to, to be sort of inspired by other people and, and talk about it with them as well. So um, that was the idea, really, just to try and find, find a way of sort of connecting people um, outside of every day, because, you know, if you're going for a run, you obviously you know they're a runner, but you know, in everyday life, you don't necessarily know that. So that was the idea back in October 2015, and then I think we launched April 2016. Uh, um, but it, it was that was all just about trying to, you know, is there anything there? You know, is, is there, is, is, you know, is, do people want do that, want that sort of thing? So yeah, we were trying to just, just develop a few ideas around that. But yeah, that was the reason why we started, and um, just really just to try and find a connection with people in everyday life, really. So. So it's me uh, and, and two friends, basically, so Craig and, and Martin. Um, so we started it, um, it, we started it together. Um, we're all sort of slightly different roles within Runner, um, and we're all sort of, you know, but collectively that's, that's, that's our sort of, uh, the, the, major, the major people in, in, in there with our sort of partners as well, um, you know, supporting us uh, with ideas and all that kind of great stuff as well. So, yeah, so it's, it's myself, Craig and Martin, I think. Craig's really passionate about running, you know, he, he's, I think he does like a sub-20 park run with a buggy. You know, which I, I can't. I'm quite done sub 20 without pushing a buggy. Uh, to be honest, so um, uh, you know, I, I like to think he covers the shorter, faster stuff, and I just cover the sort of the sort of long plods in the countryside. You know, and sort of whiling away with my own thoughts type stuff. So yeah, we're, yeah so we just started because um, um, I, I think I was spending a lot of time on, on sort of social media, like sort of Twitter, as a great example, and um, just chatting to people about running. You know, and, and and that's kind of like what I like doing my pastime. So you're either sort of running or chatting about running. Um, and that was another reason you thought, well actually, you know, there's lots of people that I've never even met online uh, and on social media that I've you know, got a lot of connection with um, you know, and, and a lot in common with and you know, love chatting to them about running and what they're up to and what I'm up to. And I thought, you know, if you could sort of bring that into everyday life a little bit and have people um, that you can, you know, that you feel sort of, you can start a conversation with in a, in a cafe, in a bar, you know, or just walking along the street, you know, um, it would be really great. And that was, that, that was kind of where Runner sort of started, really. We thought we could bring that digital world into sort of the actual world and hopefully maybe start some conversations. And, um, and we had a really good, uh, I think, uh, we having an epiphany moment, as I, as I always like to say, is um, Craig and I were just sat, just having a beer. Um, just down somewhere locally to us, and uh, we're in our, our original sort of runner T-shirts. And um, some guy who just sat opposite us, was chatting to his friend. He just sort of, sort of said, "Guys, sorry to interrupt you. Does that, does that say runner?" And I went, went, "Yes, it does say runner." He went, what, "What is it?" And I, we sort of explained to him that, you know, that we're starting a brand and they wanted to connect with other runners, etc. It turns out, you know, he was running 12 marathons in 12 months and uh, raising money for, um, for cancer research. So, um, so it's great to be able to, you know, that instant connection. You know, I'm sure he wouldn't have said hello to us. You know, we ended up buying a drink. He bought us a drink. We were there for like an hour, just chatting about running and what races he had coming up and that kind of stuff. And, and that was kind of like, actually, you know, it is quite, it is quite a nice thing we're trying to do here. We're trying to just sort of bring together people who you wouldn't normally talk to and just um, and just have a chat about running really so um, yeah that was a really good moment for us uh, yeah so we start to work with mind we just we give 10% of our profits to mind and um, just because it's a way of giving back to something that we really believe in I think I think they say one in four people has sort of mental health issues um, but I think it's probably more than that personally I think you know there's different obviously scales of, sort of mental health um, problems um, just from you know and, and for, for us uh, running is a really good way of sort of helping to manage sort of mental health um, you know, certainly it really works for me I think it's a good way of, uh, of doing doing that so I think you know we've always wanted to give back to, 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 to a cause that we believe in um, and the link between running and, and, and um, uh, mental health I think is really strong so we've always wanted to give back to them um, so, yeah, so we've always given 10% of the profits, but, um, I think last year we created Miles for Mind, so we created a virtual run, and we thought, you know what, wouldn't it be great to make some noise about mental health, you know, and try to raise awareness of it, I, I know I read January does a fantastic job of that as well, but we kind of wanted to sort of, it'd be even more explicit in the messaging, yeah, and we've had 
thousand people sign up for our virtual run, um, which we had, we, everyone was using the hashtag mental health matters and it's okay not to be okay. Uh, and and you know, there was so much buzz around social media. Um, and and it's, so it's great to be able to give some money back, but actually what's more important is trying to raise the profile of you know, that. It's okay to actually have a conversation around mental health. Um, you know, and, and there's, not, you know, there's no stigma attached to it. And I think that's, um, that's, what, that's been one of the best things we've done, I think, actually. Um, and that's not a back runner, there's nothing, nothing to do. We just hosted a virtual run, to be fair. Um, you know, but it's all about raising that awareness, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and obviously give them the hundred percent profits to mind. But it's more about raising the awareness about mental health for us. So, um, yeah, so it's been it's an important charity to, to I think you need to raise awareness for, and uh, you know, it's good you know that mental health matters really. So that's the kind of message we're trying to get out there. It's all about the community, in all honesty. Um, obviously, we had an, an idea. Um, there's lots of brands out there. You know, there's lots of great running brands out there. You, you know, and there's lots of great lifestyle brands out there. To be fair, um, but it, like the community has sort of latched onto us. You know, in, in such a positive way. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, we're just runners. You know, we're, we are fundamentally runners. We like doing short stuff, long stuff, but. Regardless of the brand, you know, that's who we are and you know, if we weren't doing runner we would just be out running, or, you know, um, so I think the community, you know, just supporting us and, you know, and inspiring us and hopefully we sort of support and inspire people as well along the way, um, like there wouldn't be a runner without running, uh, without the running community I should say, so um, yeah for us it's, it is, you know, it, it, it is, that's 100%, that's, that's kind of core to our sort of values and, and I've no idea where runner will end up in the future but you know I think if we as long as we stay true to, to, to what we believe in, that's you know the running community, and we try to you know incorporate them in our decisions, you know, and just just support and inspire, and just talk about running with them. I think you know, I think I think for me, runners already been a success because I think as I said at the start, I kind of just wanted to sort of make more friends and, and, and connections and you know and just chat about running with more people. And in fairness, you know, we, we've, we've done that through social media, we've done that through you know engaging with great great people at the running show and all, all this kind of good stuff. And, and for me, that's what you know that's what runner is, is fundamentally about. It's just about that community and sort of being. Just being a small part of the overall running community, I think, um, yeah, it's been amazing to be part of. We put it on a t-shirt, and I do believe this is very true, actually. I think if you, have, if you have the courage to start, you'll find the strength to finish. So we put it on a t-shirt, and but I do think it's true. I think it's true in running, and I think it's true in, 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 in real life, as I call it, or, or life and you know, work. I think a lot of the time, you know, I, I, I have said before, there is more in, in people than people realise, and I think... Um, a lot of it is just sort of lacing up, getting out the front door, you know, actually you know, giving it, giving something a go. You know, you've got the courage to get out there and put yourself out there to a training plan, put yourself out there to a race that you've perhaps not run that distance before, you know, whether that's 5k or couch to 5k or whether it's ultra marathons. You know, if you if you have the courage to start, you know, you, you will get there. You know, if you, you if you execute, you know, if you work hard. Uh, and, you, and you execute your plan, then yeah, you'll, you'll have the, you'll, you'll have fun, strength to finish. Um, that's not always the case, obviously, if things go wrong like Edinburgh. Um, but you know, you know, so uh, you know. have you ever been back to Edinburgh Marathon since? I haven't been back to Edinburgh Marathon. Would I like to go? So I would, your nemesis. Would I, would go I would love to go back to Edinburgh. Yeah, I would. I would. I would love to go back. I think I, I would go back, and I'd probably go back to try and mirror the time that I was trying to get. But, but I'll have to. Yeah, seven. Yeah, seven four. Wow. Well, I, I think I started at seven. Who knows what I was at when I collapsed? But. Um, um, but yeah, there's lots of good races. I've always said never do the same race again, certainly the bigger ones, because there are so many races, you know, and it'd be great to do like lots of them. So, um, so yeah, I've always said that. So I would, but I probably would go back to Edinburgh just because technically I haven't actually done it because I, I didn't get an official time. So, um, um, but there are, yeah, lots of good races out there. We did Athens last year, um, which is the original marathon. Yeah, that was, that was pretty epic. Um, it is one big hill though, it is one big hill. So it's, it's, t it's 10k flat, and then it's like, about, it's about 13 and a half miles straight up. And living on Portsmouth on the south coast, we don't do hills in Portsmouth. Um, my, my local seafront is pretty flat, I can assure you of that. So, um, so it's a bit of a shock to the system when I got to about mile. There's a funny old story actually, so Craig, Craig will appreciate this. Um, to Craig's one of the other guys from Runner, so we ran it together. Um, and uh, so he had his story, on it, uh, uh, but here's my, here's my story on it. So we ran together. Um, we ran together and we, we ran the first 10k. We were both feeling good, both, both feeling pretty comfortable, um, with it well within our pace, you know, nothing, nothing Edinburgh like, you know, nice and comfortable pacing. And then um, I think I had to stop to go to the toilet and, uh, and I said, Okay, you just carry on. And I, and I managed, I could see him in the distance when I could come out, so he wasn't too far ahead. So I managed to catch him up and I got to caught, caught him up about mile 11, I think. Um, so it took me a good couple of miles to catch him because I didn't want to sprint and catch him, and, and, and so he was maintaining a pace. And then I lost him again about mile. 13 or 14 because I, I think I 
basically burnt myself out trying to catch him. And then I said, no, you, you carry on. You, you're on a nice steady pace. You carry on. And, and I thought I wouldn't see him again. Uh, you know, I saw him to go from the distance. A bit disheartening because, you know, you know, when you've got, you know, it mentally it's kind of quite difficult and quite challenging. You know, you're just going up for another six miles. Um, so I thought, you know, you know what, I've done this before. I mean, I've, had, I've had a few setbacks. You know, I know, I know what it's like. It goes highs and lows. So I thought, just keep to my plan, you know, keep to my plan, keep plodding away. You know, if you need to slow down because, you know, you're struggling with the hills, um, then, then slow down a bit, you know, and just make sure you know, sort of like, listen to your body type stuff. All the things I learned from Edinburgh, obviously. Um, and eventually, I, I think I got to mile 19 and a half where it basically goes downhill for the last sort of 10K, just over 10K. And it's, um, and I felt really good. And I had no idea where Craig is, you know, just he's long gone. But I felt really good. So I thought, you know, I picked up the pace, you know, felt, felt great. And that, that sort of cruised in and I, got, I caught him up. I saw somebody in a runner t-shirt uh, <laughs> in the distance about mile 24 and a half, 25 miles. I thought, I might be seeing things, but I'm pretty sure that's one of my black and gold striped t-shirts. And there's not many people here wearing runner, I don't think, other than probably me and Craig. So it must be Craig. So, so Caught him up, and, I, and, I, and again, you know, that sort of mental lift, you know, when you sort of see someone you weren't expecting. Um, caught him about mile 25. I was feeling fantastic at that point, so I caught him. I, I said, Craig, hello, how you doing, mate? And he just, he, he, I, he, I think he struggled, let's put it that way. I think he struggled with the hill. He was, he was in a world of pain. He wasn't enjoying life right then. And um, I was like, how you doing? I didn't think I'd see you again. He was, he was just, just sort of just focused on not talking and just getting to the, to the end. So, um, so I must admit, so we started together. We sort of, the middle bit, we didn't really stick together. And yeah, that was, that was, that was the plan. Well, it wasn't the plan, but the plan was to just make, make sure everyone was maintaining their own sort of race. And then I managed to catch him up and I felt great. And we finished together in the end. Um, but yeah, he was in a, it wasn't loving life, shall we say. And uh, it, it was his Edinburgh, yeah, yeah. But he stayed in his feet, bless him, but um, he wasn't enjoying life. And uh, yeah, I got to the end, I felt great. But I think I think that's a I think it's a little bit of experience. I kinda of know when I'm suffering a little bit, so I kind of I managed to dial it down and just sort of, you know, keep within myself. So, you know, I'm gonna struggle on hills, I'm not great on hills. Um, and I think yeah, I think that was just my bit of ultra marathon type experience where I know where I'm I'm struggling. So um, yeah, it was great. It was a good old story. Just a, oh, I can't just remember the, the elation of seeing him. The elation, just <laughs> mile 24 and a half. So that's, oh, that's Craig. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he has a different different story to tell on that one, but uh, I'll let you interview him afterwards. Sure he said he would slow down for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he said. Yeah, So he knew I was coming, so he thought he'd wait for me. Yeah. Probably say no, but only because I don't, I don't think Craig enjoys doing the long stuff which I like to do, and I can't run as fast as him on the short stuff, so like, well, I think we're so poles apart. I think, I think there would be, I think there absolutely would be, because, you know, it's a bit of sort of friendly sort of banter, etc. but I think we're so poles apart, you know, I think his park run PB is like 17.50, or like his, his early 18s or late 17s, and I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm nowhere near that. Um, but he doesn't like doing the ultras. I, I, I'm not sure he's done an ultra. Actually, he doesn't, I, like, I like sort of slowly plodding, so I think I'd like to sort of, you know, bring him into the, the ultra world. I'm sure he'd do very good, but... Um, uh, but yeah, I think there isn't quite, I think just because we're, we're slightly different runners, shall we say. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, I think that's what got me into running originally, as I say, just a bit of banter, you know, a bit of a friendly rivalry, um, just because you have with your mates when you sort of grow up, etc. Um, but now, yeah, I just sort of do it for myself these days. So um, yeah, it's good. Matt, thanks very much mate, for your time. Yeah, pleasure. Nice to see you again. Yes, you. So I want to say a big thank you to Matt for meeting me there and talking about his running experiences, also about runner itself and mind and what they're doing to sort of make awareness of mental health issues. It's such a big issue these days. Um, and it's great that they're doing their part to raise awareness from it. So please check the description below, go check out their website, support our smaller businesses in this country. Don't be afraid to talk to other runners and as always, stay happy.